Yeah. Well, it's uh, it's exciting to to be back in in March Madness and the NCAA tournament. Um, it was great to be in the first bracket because it's uh, it is very nerve wracking. Uh, I think we're all we were confident we were going to be in, but there was a lot of craziness uh, the last couple of days that kind of threw everything into chaos. But um, our guys. We got what we deserved. I mean, we are an NCAA tournament team. Um, we're excited about the opportunity uh, to go to New York City, uh, Brooklyn. Um, I know there's a lot of Northwestern alums and, and people in that area. And, um, you know, playing against a team that went to the Final Four last year. And we'll do a deep dive. You know, I've, I've studied them from afar. And the job Dusty's done with, with Florida Atlantic uh, these last two years has been awesome. And, and, and we'll get to work. and and be, be ready to roll on Friday, you know, whenever we play. So just really excited, excited for our program, but most excited for our, our players. I mean, the, the investment and the time that they put in, um, it was all, you know, is why he came back. It was never about records. It was never about all America. I mean, all that stuff takes care of itself, but the conversations he and I had were always about legacy of winning, you know, and to, to lead a team to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournaments um, the way Boo has. I'm, I'm so happy for him and his leadership and then all the guys. I mean, we, we've had injuries. We've had curveballs thrown at us along the way. And, and you know, to have a year, I, I didn't really notice it until I looked at it, but I think we never lost more than two games in a row. You know, when you play in the Big Ten and you play tough non-conference games, like that means you're a team that – is pretty tough and pretty resilient. And, and when you have your hiccups, you, you bounce back and you play well. So we're excited. Um, can't wait to get started, get to, ready for preparation, and, and get ourselves ready to play Floor Atlantic on Friday. Do you have questions, David? Uh, Boo, in your final season, you lead this team back to the NCAA tournament. Now you get to go play in your home state, the NCAA tournament. What does it mean to you to be able to go home for, for these games? Yeah, I mean, it's super special. You know, uh, it kind of just seems like uh, – you know, it's all fitting, you know. Uh, <clears throat> the people always talk about how I how I chose to stay here and come back for my fifth year and I didn't go and then enter the portal. And they, they talk about how it's a true uh, story, you know, they're sticking, sticking hard times out. And <clears throat> me coming back and, you know, being able to accomplish this is super special, obviously. But then, you know, now, now they being back, playing in the first game, uh, a place two hours from from the hometown it just kind of feels like the cherry on top it feels like uh it's kind of god just rewarding me uh for being loyal and 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 for staying the course uh but i'm really excited because i know i'm gonna have a lot of family there and uh it's, it's gonna be <clears throat> potentially you know uh one one of you know the last college games they get to watch in person so it'll be a special moment and uh i'm super excited were you hoping to be playing in Brooklyn? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's awesome to play in Brooklyn. You know, it'll be, it's a it's a lively city. You know, New York City is definitely uh, a spot to be. But, uh, yeah, I'm super excited that it's, it's close to home. And, you know, like I said, I'll have a lot of family come. Matt, Coach, this is the first back-to-back -back NCAA tournament in the program's history. Has it set in for you guys what you've accomplished together? Um, probably not. You know, I, I think – Things you accomplish, they don't truly set in until kind of time has passed. Because um, we're in the middle of it right now. You know, you, you're not really in, in reflection mode because we're in attack mode. You know, we're, we're trying to continue to win. We're trying to be the best we can. You know, I think, though, once the season ends and we get into the spring and summer at some point, um, you know, with, uh, with a nice adult beverage, I'll probably sit back and... Uh, and reflect on how special this has been, but but right now I'm as a competitor. You're you're just kind of in that attack mode right now. You you see, okay, we're playing Florida Atlantic. You know, for me, it's like, okay, I I want to our video guy load up my computer with the film. Let's let's get to work. We got you know whatever four days to get ourselves ready um, to play an outstanding team. And and but but there's no question. You know when the 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 history of what this program has been, you know, for this group of guys, specifically Boo as the leader, um, to to be a consistent winner. You know, that's all we, you know, we went the first time and then we didn't do as well the next year. It was, you know, that was a fluke. And and then we did it last year and it was it was gonna, everything was gonna be like it was the, the time before. And and uh, these guys res refused to believe that narrative. Um, you know, we were writing our own story. I'm so happy for these players. They all they've done all year is just show up every day and work their butts off, and 
and and accept coaching and and you know good and bad if we didn't play well we we bounced back if we played well we tried to figure out how to keep it going we've withstood injury all those things but it's a testament to these guys and they deserve this you know and and I want them to celebrate this tonight uh because it is it's guys it's really hard to go to the NCAA tournament you know especially in today's day and age with all that's going on in college basketball to be a part of this field is something incredibly special. You can never take it for granted to be one of these 68 teams. We've worked really hard for it. Uh, they're going to celebrate it tonight. But then once we come to the gym tomorrow, it's going to be a business approach to get ready for Friday. Coach, you played several tournament teams over the season. How do you think those games have helped, sort of, will help to prepare for this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think our non-conference slate and then and then playing, I didn't see how it's going to shake out, but but also because uh, we were we were on off the board so quick, so you didn't really get to see the rest of the bracket. But um, you know, I think that's why you play the schedule you play. Uh, being in the Big Ten, I mean, we and we we played the best teams in our league twice. You know, we, we played Purdue twice. We played Illinois twice. We played Wisconsin twice. We played Nebraska twice. We played Mich You know, we all the teams that are going to be in the field, we played them all twice. So, you know, I, th I think we've played, you know, a Dayton, which was a terrific team, a Mississippi State, you know, NCAA quality team. So you use those experiences, different kind of styles, different kind of teams you've played, and, you know, you try to, you know, you hope that throughout the year you keep getting better. You, you draw upon those experiences and, and know that, hey, we've played teams that, that are in this. I mean, I've, I've said in the NCAA tournament, you just want to get invited. Once you get invited, everybody in this field is good, right? We've seen 16s beat ones and 15s beat twos. And, like, you just want to be invited. You want to have a shot, you know, to compete. And we're excited that we get this opportunity. Boo, what lessons did you learn in last year's tournament that you're hoping to apply this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I I think it's just a complete different team uh, this year. So uh, every year you you gotta learn different things. Uh, but for this team specifically, I think it's just being ourselves. Uh, you know, coach always says it before every game. You know, just go out there and be ourselves. And I think when we do that, we're a really really good team. And uh, you know, because when everyone's just being themselves, we're out there flowing. You know, we're having fun. We're super locked in, and uh, we're just playing at a really high level. So just. We're just going to have to be ourselves. Right. Chris, obviously the uh, the injuries that came along take away two guys that have NCAA experience. How do you feel your team adjusted to those as that happened this year, and how great is that challenge without having that experience going with you to Brooklyn? Yeah, I, I think um, – you know, the fact that we've had a handful of games. I think Ty missed the last nine games, you know, the regular season. Um, so to play almost half the conference season without him, uh, I think Matt maybe missed the last four uh, or so. So we've we've had to play without those guys now. Uh, for and, and we're still learning. I think that's – we're still learning how we can use what we have, right? Our team is a little bit different constructed than it was when we had all – you know, both of those guys in the lineup. But – We've shown we could be really competitive. You know, we've we're playing a little bit differently in terms of how we get it done, but I, you know, we still have found a way to get some wins. We found a way to be really competitive and stay tough-minded, and we've gotten some guys some experience here the last couple of weeks that you know maybe weren't playing a whole lot of minutes. You know, Luke Hunger specifically, Blake Smith. You know that you know Blake Preston now uh, has had to play more. So you know we're going to really need those guys to step up when you play in the NCAA tournament. You need everybody you know ready to go in order to be successful. You've talked a lot about that camaraderie as you've suffered those injuries. How's that grown in these last couple of weeks? Yeah, I just think our guy. We, we have a really close team. I mean, these guys, uh, it's a testament to leadership. You know, a lot of times on teams, you know, they're close, but there's all little factions where maybe three or four guys hang out. And, I mean, these guys hang out a lot. Man, we're on the road. You know, you, you could see a meal table and you could see different guys, you know, at breakfast and then a different group of guys sitting together at lunch and – they have a lot of fun together. Um, they're great friends, you know, and I think that carries out onto the court when you have those kind of friendships. You know, you get in tough situations. That that's when you lean on people you know you can trust and can count on. And I see that in this group. Like they, there's a trust level there. There's a belief in each other. There's a confidence. And you know, I've, it's been one of my most fun years coaching because I haven't had to deal with one attitudinal problem the whole year long I mean it, it's it's always been about strategy as coaches and that's the best kind when you, when you can spend all your time as a coach trying to figure out okay how do we play on offense what do we do on defense how can we attack this team versus how do we get this guy's attitude right or how can we get this guy bought in more we've never had that all year and that's a testament to the leadership and the guys in that locker room and I think that's a big part of why we've been successful 
uh, Chris, when you, you know, obviously you guys made history the first time you made the tournament, and then when you guys dropped back down in the standings, was it easier to believe that you could do it again once you've done it before, or was it a little more of a, uh, you know, man, we got to climb that mountain again. This is going to be really tough. Did, you, did it ever get to um, the point where it's tough to believe? Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, th there's no question. Um, you know, we had worked so hard, you know, in those first few years to get back, you know, get there for the first time. Um, and then, you know, took a step backwards, you know, things happen and, you know, I, I wish I could have been better in that moment. I've said that a ton, but there were a lot of factors and things that went along and we just didn't, we didn't sustain it, you know, and we kind of dropped back to the bottom four of the league. And I knew the position our program was in that we kind of had to have a reset. And that was very hard for me because we started kind of with a, <laughs> with a reset and got there and then kind of the house kind of burned down and we had to b build it again. And to me, it was harder the second time because there was so much negativity around us. You know, the first time when you get a new coach in and a young coach, it's like, oh, the, the new guy's here, he's going to do it. And we did it. And then, you know, that coach goes through some years where the team doesn't do as well. And it's all of a sudden like, well, maybe he can't get it done. And that's why I'm so indebted to Boo and these guys, you know, that, that group even last year w with Chase and Robbie, you know, that group of guys that was kind of the core um, that, that stuck with us. Then now you add Nick and Brooks and Ty Berry and Matt Nicholson. And, you know, as there was so much negativity, we just got together and we said, no, we're, we're, we're all here for a reason. We're going to build this thing back up and we're going to do it together. Uh, but there were definitely tough times. And that's what makes it so special, you know, to, you know, I always say it's, I mean, it's, it, it's easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Right. I mean, that's why you look. I mean, it's it's been very hard. We've worked hard. There are a lot of people have had to do a lot of things to make this happen. And for these guys to, you know, kind of dig down these last couple of years and get us back to this point, um, I'll be forever indebted to them for their loyalty and their work ethic. And because it was to me, this this the second build was was even harder than first. And in a lot of respects, even more rewarding, you know, what we had to go through to get here. I know you said you mentioned it's one of the preseason goals to be back to the tournament. What was the point for you in the season that's had a lot of ups and downs when you knew that this team had the stuff necessary to be here at this point? You know, I just think probably early in the conference slate um, when, you know, we it, our first eight to ten games in the conference were a monster. I mean, we – we played we played all the best teams twice, you know, really in the first 10, 11 games of the year. And, um, you know, for us to come out and, and to have the win, you know, we, we got throttled at Illinois and then, to, you know, the, we won the Purdue game at home. But then, you know, to come back and, and to have some of the wins we had beating Illinois at home, being able to to go on the road and, you know, the way probably one of the one of the one of the main games, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but, you know, how we played at Purdue. You know, that, that really showed a lot about our team. You know, here's the team who's, you know, arguably the best team in the country. You know, we had we had beaten them in an overtime game here. You knew we were going to get their best shot in the toughest environment in, in our league right now in Mackey. Um, and for our guys to, you know, to have the ball and have a shot in the air to win the game on the road, you know, under – I was like, man, I even though we lost that game – I came out of there. I said, "Man, we're we're pretty good if we can if we can stay right, if we can keep growing, if we can keep building." And so, you know, there there were various times throughout the year, and then obviously, the win at Maryland, you know, was was really special. You know, not having Ty, not having Ryan, you know, starting Blake Smith, you know, and um, you know, walk on who really hadn't played the whole year to go on the road and get that win, and you know, one that we really needed late in the year. I mean, that those were just examples of what kind of has made this team special throughout the year. Back to when you first brought Boo into the program uh, and you first saw him at a California AAU tournament in 2018. Yeah. How rewarding has it been for you to go and embark on this journey alongside your point guard? It's had its ups and downs, but you're now going back to your second consecutive NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's uh, it's been special because you don't see it a lot now in college basketball. You know, this is kind of when I grew up, this is the way it was. Like you, you came in as a freshman and you had to figure things out. 
you know, the, it was relatively old and, and you had to figure it out. It was a new level. You know, you had talent, but you had to learn how to be successful and play. And that's what happened with Boo. I mean, I, I threw him into the fire right away. You know, he he had the ball in his hands. He, he started figuring things out as a freshman, then broke his foot. So he misses a month. Uh, we only end up winning, I think, three games, you know, that year in the conference. Um, a lot of ups and downs, you know, a lot of struggles along the way. We come back the next year, you know, we, we win six, you know, so we will go from three to six, but really still kind of going through the struggles and the growing pains and, you know, and, and, and for us to continue to just stay together. You know, I'm sure there were times where he was really frustrated. There were times I was frustrated, but we never we never bailed on each other. You know, it was always like, hey, we're going to do this. And, you know, for then for us to be able to get to last year and now this year and, and you know, for him to have the success he had individually, you know, he's 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 been amazing. Just as, forget about as a player, just to see his personal growth as a as a man, as a leader. You know, all those things. Th those are the things as a coach that that's what you know that that's what you value more. You know, you love the winning, you love the development piece, but it's awesome for us to you know you don't see guys be with with at a place for five years anymore. So for him to be here for five years and to watch him grow into the man he is now is pretty special. You got FAU on Friday last yeah. year at Boise State on Thursday. How much of an advantage is that extra day of preparation for Yeah, we'll try to use it to our advantage. You know, it'll be an extra day of practice. Um, you know, we still are bumps and bruises of the year like every team does. So, you know, managing, trying to get ourselves as healthy as possible and getting our legs fresh. And just another day against an opponent we really don't know. You know, I mean, I've watched them play. I mean, I'm a big basketball fan, so I've watched them. But to really do a deep dive and a study and, and learn about them and get to know them better and, and more so for these guys to get a, the better feel for who they are. So by the time we take the floor on Friday, you know, we'll be as prepared as possible. For Boo, same question I had for Coach. When did you know during this season that this was a team that you could help take back to market? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, I mean, it, it, it all started in the summer, you know, just being on previous teams that, you know, hadn't that hadn't made it and then, uh, you know, just preparing with team, with, like a team going through last year. And then so just coming into this year, I kind of had an idea of, you know, what a team looks like. Uh, I knew that we had pieces and our, and our toughness and our, 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 resi our, our resilience was just through the roof. So I had a lot of confidence from the jump. And then, uh, you know, like Coach said, you know, to start off the season, it was, it was, it was, we literally were playing all the top teams in the league uh, twice. And, you know, we, we had a, a pretty good record. I think we went six and four in the first 10 games. Yeah. And, uh, but really that, that game on the road uh, versus Purdue, you know where I had the shot at the end to you know make the to to win, uh, that that game I really that I mean just like Coach said like going into that type of environment you know with the way the game was called and everything and uh, just still being able to not use that as an excuse and still almost be in a position to win the game uh, it just showed a lot of a lot of toughness in the group and uh, I knew that we could compete with anyone in the country at that point. Was saying about you just now, all the praise that he gives you, and deservedly so. Yeah, I mean, coach is my guy. Uh, he says that he, he's indebted to me, but I'm just as much indebted to him. Uh, you know, when I was coming out of high school, I keep the there's a poster in my locker, it says like 318th national rank. Uh, when I was coming out of high school, that's what they thought of me. So, uh, but coach, he thought otherwise, and uh, I remember he was on family vacation with his <laughs> wife and his kids, and uh, he called me and he's like, "Hey, I use I never work during vacation, uh, <laughs> but I just want you to know how urgent this is, and uh, we really need a point guard, and and we really love your game, and we really love for you to come to Northwestern." And you know, once I came on my visit, I met Coach, and I, I seen the campus, and I was. I was already I was committed <laughs> before my the end of my visit, so you know the, it was kind of like today with the selection show. Right away, uh, I came on my visit and I literally committed within like six hours of of it starting. Uh, but Northwestern was and Coach Collins they were the only high major offer I had coming out of high school, and I've always been a very uh, competitive person and 
thought higher of myself than anyone else does. So uh, I just I knew that I had to capitalize on the opportunity, uh, and I and I've always believed in myself uh, just as much as coach. Time for a couple more, Chris. Um, Chris, I know you still have to dive into the details, but what recollections do you have of that run that Florida Atlantic made, uh, as you probably watched uh, last yeah. spring? And um, how much did you use that as a carrot for these guys? They were a nine seed a year ago. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, not only letting these guys know how much is possible, uh, as well as just watching all the conference tournaments over the last couple of days. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think you just have to go in and you can't look at the tournament in a whole. You got to just attack the game in front of you. Um, Florida exam uh, Atlantic was a great you know, a uh, example of that last year. You know, I remember them, I, I actually remember being in our hotel and them, you know, having to really fight out a tough game against Memphis in the first round where they, I think, hit a last shot to beat them, um, which then triggered, you know, going into the next round and, and getting another win. And then the momentum builds and you start believing more. And I think they have their whole team back from a team that's played in the Final Four. They're a terrifically coached team by Dusty May. Um, I've gotten to see them play maybe four or five times, you know, just as a fan watching T, you know, and I, I have a lot of respect for their players and the way they do things and how hard they play. And, and they're going to lean. They, they went to the Final Four last year, you know, so they they have positive memories of what their experience is in the NCAA tournament. And it's going to be a tough challenge. I mean, it's now you throw the records out of the book. You know, we're 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 in the tournament. We're, we're playing a tough team, and we got to do everything we can at the end of that game to try to still be standing and give ourselves a chance to advance. Mike? Hey, Boo, along those lines, to, you know, as a competitor, to get FAU, a team who went to the Final Four last year, to potentially get a shot at UConn, who won it all last year, just how exciting is, is that first-round matchup um, and even potentially what could come next? Yeah, I mean, it's super exciting. Just, just being able to play in March is super exciting alone. Uh, like I said, having that self belief in myself, I always love you know big time moments and big time games. So, you know, just being able to have the opportunity, you know, like you said, to be able to if we get past FAU to you know go against a, a team like UConn, it's just gonna be fun. But uh, it's it's gonna be the same approach with every game, any team we play. You know, we're just gonna have to go out there and be ourselves and just be super confident. Boo, to embark on a five-year journey alongside one of the few coaches at the high major level to, uh, who believed in you and now be back to your second straight NCAA tournament, how rewarding is that for you? Could you repeat that? Uh, to embark on a five-year journey alongside one of the few uh, coaches at a high major level who believed in you and now you're back to your uh, second straight NCAA tournament, how rewarding is that for you? I mean, it's super rewarding. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I remember coming in five years ago. I mean, it sounds long, but it, it feels like it's only been two years total. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't know a thing. <laughs> I, I came in thinking I knew everything, uh, but I didn't know a thing. Uh, I was so young, just had so much to learn. Uh, but these past five years, it, it's really changed. Like Coach says, like, I had talent. Oh, I had all of that. But, you know, just being here and being on campus and being around the staff and, and all my different teammates has really helped me grow as a person, uh, as a leader. It's helped me learn how to lead different types of people uh, and really just be able to just connect with, with, with different types of people on, on, on a level that, you know, you can get the respect. And, you know, when you're trying to tell them something, they'll listen to you. Uh, I always try to tell people part of leadership, like you can't just come to practice and, you know, try to yell at someone or try to tell some someone what to do. Uh, you know, you got to really like let them know you, you care about them and you got to find time outside of basketball, you know, have conversations with them. Uh, I, I don't know. You can go to lunch, you know, ask them to go do things, just hanging out outside, you know, letting them know that like you actually care about them as a person uh, that tends to, you know, you get a lot more respect and people will listen to you a lot more. So, uh, yeah, just growing up, I mean, it's, it's been a huge credit to, you know, the university and just me being here these past five years. Uh, I mean, it's just been super special. One more question, David. Coach, you've talked a lot this year about building a winning program here and building a winning culture. How does getting to back-to-back -back March Madness cement that, move you forward and closer to cementing this program as a winning program year in and year? Yeah, I think it's huge. You know, I mean, what you go 2017, 2023, 2024, you know, three and seven, eight years, whatever, it's eight seasons, three tournaments. I mean, 
that's that's sustainability back to back. Um, you know, it's what we're striving for. We we I've said it, we want to be a program that year in and year out is in the mix. You know, and it's very hard. You know, and you can't take for granted how hard it is to get to the tournament. But um, that that's when you want to build a program that's lasting. You got to show sustainability, and and it takes. You know, there's a lot of different guys that have put on the uniform, right? It's, um, you know, some some guys are back from last year, but we, we had some guys that moved on and, and graduated. And, and obviously the team that did it for was a totally different group in 2017. So, you know, that that's when you get more of a sense that you're starting to build something, a winning culture in, in the locker room where there's an expectation and a standard that's starting to be set. And uh, you just can't lose sight of – what goes into making that happen? You know the toughness you have to have, the 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 grittiness, you know the resiliency, all those things. You can't lose sight of what's made you successful, and and that's a credit to what these guys have done this year on the heels of last year. It's uh, but to do it back to back years is is really re- rewarding, and it's uh, it shows a lot about kind of where our program has has been these last couple years, and and hopefully be a, a great sign of things to come for the future. All right. Thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate you.